Matthew chapter 16 from the authorized version of the scriptures. If you happen to have the actual scriptures, please go ahead and grab your copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, otherwise known as the King James Version. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because guess what? Guess what? I make mistakes. The mouth will go quicker than the brain, and the brain quicker than the mouth, okay? I make mistakes. I misquote. I'm a, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a perfect Englishman from Blackpool, okay? I make mistakes. I, I can sometimes be a hypocrite. Okay, I, I'm not like uh, holier than thou, <laughs> uh, like cer certain people from out northeast, and not the dear brother who we are going to have a quote from today, not that dear saint, no. I make mistakes, so read along with me, okay? It's important that you do that, all right? Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 on verse 5. The Pharisee also, with the Sadducees, came. And tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. A sign. Oh, boy. You know, I did, I did not look. Uh, but I bet you, yesterday, with that eclipse thing, I bet you all these nut job, Pentecatholic uh, charismatics, and that whack job, uh, the true Ruckmanite, Mr. Breaker, I and don't. Don't send me anything. Please, don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> but I'm sure that Mr. Breaker twit uh, has been banking and milking. Well, hey, yesterday could have been the rapture. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's a nutball. But I'm sure with yesterday, all kinds of these heretics were saying signs about this, signs about that, going to Joel in Acts chapter 2, which we're going to touch on today. <laughs> okay, I'm sure they were. I'm sure they were, okay? But in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, <coughs> verse 22, the Jews require a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. What is a Jew? Links in the description box will be there for you. What is a Jew? Scripturally, a Jew is someone who is, keeps the law, yes. But see, scripturally, with one exception. Scripturally, Jew is always equated with one exception onto the Hebraic people. The Hebraic people were taken from Shem, not Ham, not Japheth. Okay, you stupid, willfully ignorant, stupid black Hebrew Israelites who are virtually impossible to talk to. Uh, they are very difficult to communicate with. They, they are, they are, they are. You guys are stupid, willfully ignorant. You don't want to hear the truth, okay? You guys are racist. You're saying because of the color of your skin, you're God's chosen people, okay? But for us Japhethites, what's the equation to that? Rome. Rome. Do you do people understand, us, and us of Japheth, that... The Romans, Roman Catholicism, is a Japhethian thing based off of a Hamitic religion from Babylon. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Yeah. See, a Hebrew is one who is taken from Shem, not Ham, not Japheth. Okay? Scripturally, but... Prove, the proof for you of that will be in the description box in the two-part video, What is a Jew? You don't want to watch it and spout off at the mouth? You can go to hell then. You can go to hell then. Okay? You can go to hell then and keep worshiping your father, the devil. You can go to hell then, okay? Go right ahead. You want the, you want the scriptural answers the, for you in the description box, okay? All right? Scripturally, a Jew with one exception in Esther is virtually always equated unto the Hebraic people, taken from Shem. Okay? With that one exception, 
in Esther. Okay? We talk about that in What is a Jew? Okay? You go look at that. All right? Catholics, you are not Israel. You black Hebrew Israelites, you're not Hebrews. It's impossible. Okay? Even the Taoists and the Buddhists who are of Shem, they're not Hebrews. Hebrews were taken out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line to whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Answer, answer for that will be in the description box for you. Okay? All right? But the Jew, for the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Back to Matthew 16, verse 2. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Uh, red sky at night, sailors didn't light. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, I believe it goes. I don't know. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky. <laughs> but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now, he was addressing the actual generation right there that he was dealing with. But to instruct us in righteousness, look at what happened yesterday. Look at what happened. I'm going to read a couple of quotes here from some brethren. Really good here. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And let's read verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Okay, and he goes on to talk to them about, hey, watch out what the Pharisees are teaching you, okay? Pharisees, like Catholics, mostly of Japheth, okay? Catholicism, as it stands, Rome was Japhethian, is Japhethian, okay? Got to remember that, all right? All right? But yesterday, the eclipse, I, I, I was out in it <laughs> and lost $20, Anyway, I was out in it, and I didn't see the eclipse, but, the, you know, how it got shady and whatnot. But there were a lot of people with them weird glasses out there, you know, checking this stuff out. I'm going to read you a quote from a couple of brethren here. Uh, this, this is great. And this right here. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? Most people understand that things are going bad. You got these idiot uh, atheists who are their own gods and stuff like that who think, well, this is all man getting better progressive. Roll up another joint, man, and keep smoking, okay? Hope they make you cough. But this comes from a brother from out northeast, okay? A brother, a saint from out northeast, okay? Not someone who's holier than thou, okay? <laughs> but a saint. Quote, and see, coming from a saint, when he says this, it's in the right context because there is none good but who God. Quote, Today is another good day for me to be looking up, waiting to be caught up with our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right, brother. I don't even need special glasses to do so like the nut jobs looking to see this solar eclipse. The lost has more of an interest in this eclipse than Jesus. And amen, brother. Really sad. Really sad. And then, of course, from our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley, folks would rather see the S-U-N covered if one takes this to be the S-O-N, it makes sense, does it not? And that quote is from our beloved Alexander B. Hartley. Think about that. 
Folks would rather see the SUN covered. See the sun covered like it was yesterday with the eclipse. Because, hey, because if the sun is covered, right? Go to, go to your John chapter 3. Oh, that's a good one for the description box. I already got notes uh, for the description box. Why John 3.16 is not the gospel. But you go to John 3. John 3. All right. John 3, verses 19 on to 21. Folks would rather, and this quote is from Brother Alexander B. Hartley, folks would rather see the S-U-N covered. If one takes this to the S-O-N, it makes sense, does it not? And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Yeah, I want sin. I want my cake and eat it too. I want, I want all the bits of this life now. <laughs> and your God, Satan's giving it to you, isn't he? Yeah. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Like our brother from out northeast said, here, the lost has more of an interest in this eclipse than Jesus. Really sad. Amen, brother. Okay? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest, why? Lest his, lest his deeds should be reproved. You come to the Jesus that is. The Jesus who is. Okay? You know what he's just going to do? He's going to put his finger on that one thing you lack. Every single time. You come to the Jesus who is through the scripture. Okay? Not a Bible. Okay? And see, a lot of y'all, you don't want that. Because it hurts. It's supposed to. Praise the Lord. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, brethren. I, and I ask their permission to use those quotes before uh, doing this video. I wasn't going to do it unless they said so. so. Isn't that something? I, I saw them yesterday. All these guys with the whack jobs with the 3D glasses looking up. I asked the one gal. It's like, because I'm I, walking home yesterday. Um... I, I have my back to it. I mean, you could see because it's quite obvious that the, there was eclipse going on. But I asked this one gal, I was like, hey, is the thing eclipsing? She's like, yeah. And I go to Bates Park over here, and uh, there's, there's like all these people out in Bates Park looking up at the sun with them silly little uh, 3D glasses on. Then the brethren texted that kind of stuff. It's like, amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because, hey, seeing is believing. And today we walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to be addressing this little thing about signs today. Okay? Now, there will be in the description box a video where we go through the thing of signs in a deeper context. But this was also, this also came from a brother. I did not ask him if I could. Uh, but uh, he asked, well, in this dispensation, can God use signs? Yes, he can. But before we get to that, sign of the prophet Jonas that our Lord mentioned. Jonah chapter 1, just one verse. Jonah chapter 1. Okay? Jonah chapter 1, which is right after Obadiah. Obadiah is after Amos, okay, or Amos. Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Okay? Now, at the beginning of this dispensation with the death of the testator, there were sign gifts given unto the apostles because the Jews require a sign. Okay? The sign gifts ended with the eventual death of the apostles. 
Okay, we thought there will be many links for you whack job uh, Pentecostal care Catholics uh, in the description box for you to consider. You don't want to consider them? That's your problem, not mine. It's your problem, not mine. Okay, <laughs> all right. But as far as the question, well, can God use science today? Uh, Jeremiah 32, just one verse. Jeremiah 32, thank you, Lord. Verse 27, just one verse. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Also, you can reference Genesis 18, 14. It's like, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And also, Matthew 19, one verse, verse 26. Matthew 19, verse 26, one verse. One verse. And Jesus, uh, wait, wait, wait. Verse 19, verse 26, Brad. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yes, God could give us signs today in this dispensation. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But see, in this dispensation today, we are to walk by faith, not by sight. Well, the Jews require a sign, though, Brad. You're right. What sign is there for the Jews? Hmm? Romans 11, verses 11 on to verse 15. And see, this is where Christianity blows it. And these King James Bible believing Christians who justify paganism. We won't get off on that. But, okay, here's the sign, as it were, that is for the Jews today. Romans 11, verses 11 on to verse 15. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. See, the Hebraic Jews, the Hebrews of Shem, not Ham or Japheth, not even like the Asiatics such as Chinese, Japanese, Siamese, whatever. Okay? But the Hebraic Jews, okay, let's read that verse again. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Why? For to provoke them to je jealousy. See, the sign unto the Hebraic Jewish people today in this dispensation is for them to see their God in the body of Christ. Okay? All right? All right. That's why it's so so beautiful when you encounter a saved Hebraic Jew who, who wants to be referred to as a Messianic Jew. Praise the Lord, because they equate Christianity as it is light, well, rightly so, with the world and Rome. Okay, but anyway, the sign that the Hebraic Jew is supposed to see is their God working in the body of Christ, especially the Gentiles. Okay. Does that mean, I mean, read chapter 11, Romans 11, with replacement theology, you twits. Okay, uh, that will be another one for the description box, okay? God has not replaced uh, the Jew with the church. That's what the Japhethian Roman Catholic Church teaches you, okay? Uh, black people are not Hebrews. You're not. You're not. Okay? Deal with it. Okay, you're the racist one. You're the racist one saying that today God is a uh, respecter of persons because of skin color. You're the racist ones. I mean, you're the racist one, pal. Okay, all right. But, let, but see, the Hebraic Jews are supposed to see their God in us. And I know for certain that Jews, Hebraic Jews, are not jealous of this joke called Christianity. And you King James Bible Christians, you think God's jealous. You think God's jealous, excuse me. You think the Hebraic Jews are jealous of you guys and your cultic little personality disorders? You do, don't you? You do. 
because King James Bible-believing Christianity has become, just like anything else, another denomination in Christianity. Bravo! Are you happy? It's all about you guys. All right, let's keep reading. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. See, Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles, but he implemented to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. You read that in Romans chapter 1. Okay? If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? The sign of the prophet Jonas. Life from the dead. Get it? Do you? Do you get it? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 5 on to verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 5 on to verse 9. Now he that wrought. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God. Who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit. See, today, in this dispensation, when you go to the Lord His way, the elect, chosen way of the cross, you don't boot the door, genius, out of the way and climb up some other way. John chapter 10 calls you a thief and a liar. Okay? <laughs> Very neat. But today, when you go to the Lord on His terms, the elect chosen way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, have, taking responsibility because you are responsible for him dying. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay? Having fear of him. Fearing him. Because if he don't save you, you're going to hell forever. Okay? You, the lesser, calls upon the greater. And see, someone who has never been broken of themselves will say, well, calling on, like the easy believest heretics, okay? They say, calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Not all of them do that, though. But a, a lot of them do. Uh, they, they, they're stupid, just believe and receive. And jumping over the necessity of brokenness and contrition and personal uh, responsibility and accountability, Okay? But see, when you go the elected way of the cross and the Lord saves you, you're sealed with that earnest of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord Himself, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. So, a sign visual stimuli yes the Jews require a sign but see the sign that the visual stimuli that the Hebraic Jew is supposed to see is God gee, Christ in you the hope of glory to make them jealous hey King James Bible believing Christian you think the Hebraic Jews are jealous of you do you think the Hebraic Jews are jealous of Christianity How many of you, how many of you have even witnessed onto the Jews before? Huh? How many of you have seen that, that uh, jealousy right in front of you? How many? I doubt many, very many of you. Okay? I doubt it. All right? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. At home, hey, I want my cake and eat it too. 
this is not it. It's like uh, like the brother from the uh, northeast. Uh, you know, ah, yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. You know, I'm looking. Every day, I'm looking. Whatever you want, Lord. <laughs> you know? You know? For we walk by faith. Not by sight. Yes, the Lord can give us signs today. But see, the signs that are implemented for us today, the body of Christ, are what? Signs that come from someone who is a new creature. I was asked, it's like, have, well, has the Lord ever given you a sign before, Brian? It's like, yeah. I'll read something in Scripture. You know, you should see my wall. It's all littered with uh, <laughs> the, the sticky notes are my friend, okay? Whenever I read the scriptures with our father, uh, always got sticky notes because he'll, he'll bring, you should see my wall here, <laughs> you know? Oh, it's like sticky note right there, right down. Put it on the wall, save it there for later, okay? But see, what will happen is the Lord, when reading scripture, will show something in scripture and then you go walk outside your door and then that thing that the Lord was talking about you see before you in some way or form okay does that make sense okay does that make sense all right it's not a visual sign as like the the, 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 the eclipse or uh, lightning coming down from heaven or ah no no that nonsense no 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 no. See, the Hebraic Jews are just supposed to see their God in us. Christian. The Hebraic Jews have turned you off long ago. <laughs> okay? So get over yourselves. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that we that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. Okay? Now go to Jonah chapter two. <laughs> there, there are these whack job closet Pentecatholics, charismatic Pentecatholics, that will come to Jonah chapter two. I've dealt with this with some psychotic uh, individual from down under. Psychotic, okay, literally. All right. Now come to this Jonah chapter two and try to use this to prove that people can go get like a sightseeing tour of heaven or hell and then come back and write a book, make a movie, and get all kinds of money. And go talk to these Pentecostal guys about, well, I was in hell and I saw the Lord. No, you didn't. I'm not doubting that these people saw something. But they didn't see something that came from the Lord. We, we talk about that at length, about signs and, you know, I have seen, I have seen. There will be a lot of links, okay, uh, I have seen. There will be a lot of links for you in the description box about this kind of stuff, okay? The Pentecatholics, you know, they like to come to this and talk about how Jonah went down in the depths of hell. It's like, oh, see, people can go to hell and come back up. Or go, go on like a sightseeing tour of hell, then come back. No, 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 no. We have the scriptures. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked psychopath. Okay? You haven't seen God. You haven't seen hell. You haven't seen heaven. Oh, you saw something maybe. Sure. No marvel. But Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No marvel that his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. These, these psychopaths say, I've been to hell and I'll now give me... No, no they haven't. You haven't been to hell and seen, you haven't seen nothing of the reality of hell. You haven't seen heaven. You have not seen the face of the Lord. Well, Paul did, yeah. And Paul said it wasn't lawful for him to even utter. But yet, you crazy Pentecatholics, it's okay for you to do what Paul didn't? 
Lord rebuke you, every single one of you Pentecostal sickos. You're crazy. Do like Dave Murphy and roll up another one. But, Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Life from the dead. There will come a time during the time of Jacob's trouble where Israel in its entirety will turn back to the Lord. Life from the dead. Life from the dead is the sign of the prophet Jonas. Link for that will be in the description box as well. Okay? And I said, and I said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. And out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. And see, uh, and even idiot Jesuits like that Andy devil. It's like, see, people can go to hell and come back. You go to hell for a kind of a purification, teaching a form of veil, uh, what, oh, oh, purgatory. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. But they'll come to this, it's like, see, people, no. 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 We walk by faith, not by sight. Not by sight and not by faith, okay? No, we walk by faith. Okay? You saying I've been to hell that you, you're contrary to the scripture and you're a liar. You're a liar. You might have seen something. I'll give you that. But what you saw didn't come from the Lord. And you go to another dispensation where it was by faith and works to try to justify it. You can go to hell. You can go to hell. Hey, you know what it looks like, right? For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods can pass me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The Hebraic Jews, temporarily, you know, temporarily, like you read in Romans chapter 11. Okay, God has not cast away his people. Okay, but salvation, have, we Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Hebraic Jew to make them jealous. And I promise you, the Hebraic Jews are not jealous of anything of this Christianity. I promise you. Okay, ask them. Ask them. Go ahead. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depths closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. And you read in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, about what waters that the horse sits on were nations, peoples, languages, and tongues. Oh, big part. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. The death, burial, and resurrection reference, okay? All right? That doesn't mean that today people go to hell and go for a sightseeing tour. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked psychopath, heretic devil. Okay? When my soul fainted, Within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came into the in, in onto the into thine holy temple. Third rebuilt temple during the time of Jacob's trouble, anyone? Okay. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Let that sink in for a little bit. Okay? Pause the video if you got to. Let that sink in on you a little bit. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, excuse me. Uh, salvation is of the black Hebrew Israelite. Salvation is of the Lord. Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. See the sign of the prophet Jonas. Israel will be reborn. That kind of thing. Okay. And Israel, the Hebraic Jew, 
is to see their God in us today. And what the Hebraic Jew sees in this joke of Christianity, yes, even the denomination of King James Bible-believing Christianity, it's a joke to them. You guys are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. It ain't funny. Now, we're, like I said, we, we touch on this deeply in the signs video, but we're going to touch on it again today. But only, only that which is relegated onto this dispensation, meaning after the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, if you are one who rightly divides the word of truth, as you should, you understand that before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Okay? Signs were still there. And after the death, burial, and resurrection, signs were given unto the apostles because the Jews require a sign for the kingdom of God, the spiritual. Okay? And those signs ended with the apostles when they all finally died. Okay? All right? True signs. True signs. But seeing their God in us is what the Hebraic Jews today are to see. Hence, now scripture doesn't outright say that that is a sign. But if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Okay? But we are going to look at the reference of sign and signs from Acts up until 2 Thessalonians. Because that's, you know, uh, the, in the time of Jacob's trouble, during the, uh, you know, in the book of Revelation, there going to be all kinds of signs, okay? And the book of Hebrews and the book of James are books written specifically for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? All right? So we are going to look at sign and signs only within this current dispensation, Okay? And we're going to see, we're going to see, as in the other video, yes, God can. But see, the minute God gives you a visual stimuli like the thing of the, uh, the, the thing in the sky, or a fireball is coming down, or these devils, blah, 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 or the uh, illusion of growing people's legs. Oh, that, that, that satanic pond scum devil, Todd White. You ever heard of that guy, the guy with the, the dreadlocks? That silly idiot. Um, he, he, he does like a carnival trick in front of people, like growing their legs that are shorter. And even magicians have called him out. It's like, dude, that's a trick. Okay, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. Acts chapter 2. Now, uh, there will be videos on tongues and baptism uh, addressing you Pentecostal Catholic twits. Okay? But, Acts chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24. And it shall come to pen. Now, here's the Joel reference. Okay? And these fake gracers are so desperate to try to justify their believe and receive heresy without scriptural repentance, which is turning from yourself onto... And it's going from unbelief to belief. No! The devils believe and also tremble. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness that you are your own God and that you can save yourself by your own belief. And the, the fake gracer avoids that. They avoid Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on verse 18. And conveniently start at a verse usually anywhere between 20 and 23. And they say that's the gospel. You guys are heretics. Y'all can go to hell unless you actually get broken. Okay? But here's the Joel thing. Okay? And I remember that the, 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 the bloke, he was like, well, I can't do it in that uh, disgusting black Poolian uh, accent. Um... But uh, it's like, well, there is an Old Testament connotation. We'll explain in a second. But Acts chapter 2, verses 17 on verse 24. Quoting from Joel. But you're going to notice a difference here. Same principle. Different dispensation. <laughs> yeah, let's go. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my capitalist spirit upon all flesh, 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my capitalist spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I, shall shew, and I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And what are we reading to? Verse 24. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. The second coming. Okay? <laughs> All right? But here's where the, uh, uh, you know, we're going to continue, and I'll show you where these devils like to catapult off of. Okay? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's verse 21 that these guys will say, you know, make the reference to Joel. Okay? And they'll say, see, it's an Old Testament thing. Same principle, different dispensation. But let's read to verse 24. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, there was not one Gentile present. The Hebraic Jews that were there spake all those languages that were mentioned in Acts chapter 2. Okay? Hebraic Jews born in those nations and also able to speak the tongues that were mentioned in Acts chapter 2. There were no Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. It was to the Jew first, primarily, alone. Okay? There were no Gentiles present. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. The Jews require a sign, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. There were no Gentiles present, brother, sister, heretic. There were no Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. There weren't. Him being delivered by the determined, determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands, Roman Catholicism, uh, they, it wasn't Roman Catholicism back then, excuse me. It would become that, but Rome, Rome, okay. By wicked hands, Rome, have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, life from the dead, having loosed, the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Now, go to Joel chapter two, and this and this is this is simply uh, resolved because the easy believism heretic will go to Joel and say, "See, it's just for the Jews, you know, just for the Jews about calling, right?" Uh, no, nitwit, it's the same principle, calling on the name of the Lord, but in a different dispensation. Okay? Well, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Joel chapter 2, verses 28 on to verse 32. And it shall come to pass afterward. First of all, <laughs> first of all, okay, um, <laughs> Had Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures during this time? <laughs> of course not. No. No. At this time, uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, wasn't even there yet. Okay? The law was still binding, which was faith and works. Eternal security was not there during under the law. Okay? The Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go. Today, you're saved, you're sealed. God and you ain't going anywhere. Okay? Simple. And it, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my lowercase s spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. You'll be like, well, why is it lowercase here and capital case in Acts? Because Christ died and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It's the same principle calling upon the name of the Lord, but within two different dispensations. Okay, This is simple. Alright? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. 
uh, some easy believers heretics call themselves dispensational, but they they say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Hence, they're not dispensational. They're devils. Okay, <laughs> never mind. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my lowercase s upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my lowercase s spirit. When was this written? When was this written? This was written under the law. Under the law. Okay? The Lord hadn't come in the flesh yet. Okay? God was not manifest in the flesh yet. Okay? All right? All right? And also for the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, except for the 144,000 Jews, eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Dude, this, see, this is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. It's the same principle calling upon the name of the Lord relegated within two different dispensations. One where eternal security was not there, one, like an axe, where eternal security is. Okay? Very simple. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call... On the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, in Joel chapter 2, verse 32, it says delivered. In Acts chapter 2, where were we? Where were we? Where was that? <laughs> um, where was that? Verse 21, and whosoever, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved. Delivered. Under the law, there was no eternal security. You could lose salvation under the law. Okay? In this dispensation, which Acts chapter 2 is in, it's applicable. Call on the name of the Lord. Saved. Eternally secure. Under the law, under the law, Okay, under the law, eternal security was not there. Okay, deliver. Okay, do you get it? It's, it's a dispensational thing. Just like that stupid argument, well, Paul and Jesus taught different things. Uh, uh, two, two different dispensations. Okay? It's the same thing calling upon the name of the Lord under the law where there was no eternal security to be delivered. And this dispensation, which is by His grace, through our faith, calling upon the Lord to be saved. Once you go the way of the cross, of course, broken and contrite, which the fake gracer likes to woo -hoo, catapult over. This isn't rocket science, people. Okay? This isn't. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 and 43. And they continued steadfastly in their apostles' doctrine, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Because it was to the Jew first. Until Acts chapter 7, with the stoning of Stephen, and Acts chapter 8, and we're going to be in Acts chapter 8, that's when the shift... It was still this dispensation, but that's when you see the Ethiopian eunuch, a Hamite, who was most likely black, was the one who was saved. Okay? All right? And you got to watch out with, with that one because you got hyper dispensationalists who will come around and say that there's one body to the Jew and one to the Gent. No, that, that's heresy. Okay? There's one body. Okay, all right, all right. So now let's go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. And remember, signs, Jews were present. Just like with tongues. 
Jews were present. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 on verse 30. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Whose threatenings? The Pharisees and Sadducees. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Acts chapter 5. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Then Peter said unto her, uh, this is uh, the thing, the sign about them lying, about selling land, and then the Lord dropped them both dead, Saphra and Ananias, okay? That's what this is about. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed to tempt the, spirit, tempt the capitalist spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought, among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. What are we reading to? On uh, to verse 13. And the rest durst no man join them himself to them, but the people magnified them. Let's read verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. And see, it was to the Jew first. Okay, before the stoning of Stephen, they were just relegating themselves unto the Hebraic Jewish people. But see, the Lord intended it for it to go out unto all the world. And see, Jewry, Jewry rejected the kingdom of heaven with the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jewry rejected the gospel, the kingdom of God, with the stoning of Stephen. Okay? Very simple. It was that the death of the testator brought in this dispensation, which is by grace through faith. Period. Okay? This, the New Testament began with the death of the testator. This dispensation. Okay? But see, God in his fairness first offered it unto the Hebraic Jewish people, even though he knew that they were going to reject it. And see, if he didn't, then it would be like Christianity says, an unfair and unjust God. Okay? which the atheists and Muslims, rightfully so, and good for them, attack the God of Christianity. Okay? Now, go to Acts chapter 7, the pivotal moment for Jewry. Still this dispensation, by grace through faith. But what happened was Jewry rejected the kingdom of God. Prophesied that it was going to do that. As we already looked in Romans 11, that we Gentiles might be grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. And I promise you, the Hebraic Jews are not jealous of any form or denomination of Christianity. They are not. They are not. Acts chapter 7. And all Stephen here is doing in verses 35 and 36 is making reference onto the past. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee? a ruler and a judge. The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. It's just making a reference onto the Old Testament. Okay? Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Shimon the sorcerer, who easy believism wants you to believe was a saved man because he believed. Shimon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8 was never a saved man. Never. But see, the easy believist heretic, just believe and receive, have to say that in order to justify their satanic doctrine. Acts chapter 8, verses 12 on to verse 13. But when they believed Philip, 
preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, spiritual, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Shimon himself, he believed also, and he was even baptized. Doesn't say that, excuse me. And, and he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done amongst the Jews. There were Jews there. Yes, the Gentiles were are being engrafted in at that time, yes. But see, Jews were still present. When you see the tongue thing, okay, Jews were always present in one capacity, okay? And they were known languages, not this blah, 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 nonsense, okay? And, oh, and prove to you that Shimon the sorcerer was not saved, okay? Verses uh, 20, on to verse 24 in Acts chapter 8. But and, and besides, Shimon the sorcerer wanted to buy the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, pay to play like in a church building, huh? Pay to play to get this deeper teaching because uh, according to Rome, uh, prophecy of scripture is to private interpretation. But if you pay the right amount of money, you can get the, the advanced course, right? Yeah. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. You're not, he's saying that Shimon's not saved. He believed, he was baptized, but he wasn't saved. He wasn't broken. He wasn't contrite. Didn't call on the name of the Lord out of fear for him. Okay? Because it was all about him. He wanted money so he could read. He wanted to buy the Holy Ghost to get that power so he could reclaim his authority so everyone would look at him like he's the big shot. Oh boy, don't that sound familiar to a lot of Christians here on YouTube and in the buildings, huh? Huh? Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Shimon the sorcerer was not a saved man. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God, you pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Absolute solid proof that Shimon was not saved. Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of those things which ye have spoken come upon me. How is that proof? He wanted Peter to pray for him, not him himself. Someone who's saved and they make a mistake like that, you're on your face, man. You're just like, Lord, forgive me. Someone who's broken and contrite and has the hell scare out of them. Lord, save me. But see, the easy believers, their faith is in their faith. They save themselves by their own belief. They are the better. They are the better. Okay? See, the lesser calls on the greater. And see, when you have been broken and are contrite and fear the Lord, you can't wait to. But see, when you're self-righteous, oh, well, we're all sinners, and you hide under that umbrella, you hide from your personal responsibility. Okay? Oh, yeah, save yourself by your own belief. Shimon the sorcerer was never a saved man. Don't believe their lies. Don't believe their lies. Acts 14 now. Acts 14. Are you catching the sign, signs thing? Okay, are you catching it? Hmm? Jews are present. Now, Acts 14, verses 1 under verse 4. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. This is Paul. This is before Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem conference. Where did Paul go to? Synagogue of the Hebraic Jews. Okay? And so spake that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of the Greeks, believe. It's right there. Jews were present. So sign gifts were there. Okay? But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, both they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace 
and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Okay, now Gentiles were present, but, but, but the Jews require a sign. The Jews were there. I'm telling you, if it were just the Greeks there, Gentiles, I doubt sign gifts would have been given because the signs were for the Jews. Okay? That's why signs and wonders were there, because Jews were present. Jews require a sign. And the Jews are supposed to see their God in the Greek Gentiles to make them jealous. Okay? By the multitude of, but the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. Okay? Like I said, this is not rocket science. This is easy stuff. Okay? And Acts 28, this one verse, and you'll see this, uh, we're, we're just reading this for the sake of reading it, because it has nothing to do with the context of, a, like, signs like the Pentecostals believe in. Uh, Acts 28, verse 11. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Which had wintered in the isle whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Sign. Like, um, I, what is that, astrological? I don't know. But it's not talking a reference of the, like, healings and that stuff. We just looked at that simply because it said sign, okay? And it has something to do with that was on a boat, okay? Now, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 12. Romans chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 12. Now, look at the context in which Paul is making this reference on to. He is referring on to signs on to the Hebraic people within the context. Check it out. Uh, where are we? 9 on the 12. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord... Uh, yeah, verse 8. <laughs> blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Circumcision, reference unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Yes, the Muslims do that thing too, but Paul is making reference unto the Hebraic Jews, to whom were given the oracles of God, the covenants, and the promises, not the sons of Ishmael, okay? Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned unto Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned? when he was in, in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he, look at the verse, and he received the sign of circumcision. See, the reference there, sign, look at the verse. Sign of circumcision. Okay, now, beg your pardon, I'm going to be a little graphic here. Most males in America today, most are circumcised. Okay? Uh, there are some who are not. Whatever. It's not a salvific requirement today in this dispensation. It's not a requirement. As it was under the law. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Timothy did not need to be circumcised, but Paul circumcised him. Okay? It wasn't a requirement. Okay? It's not required to be circumcised today as it was under the law. Okay? All right? And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that the righteous that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. What are we reading to here? In Romans chapter 4, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised, and of course Abraham's seed, which we have covered before, will be in the description. But if you don't want to look at these uh, other videos where we go through the scriptures and just want to shoot off at the mouth, 
The Lord rebuke you, shut up, and you can go to hell. Want to remain in your willful ignorance? That's stupidity. Want to learn the truth? Let's go. Let's see what this, what's in the scripture. Okay? But see, the thing of the sign there is a reference onto the circumcision, which is not a requirement for it today. Go to Ezekiel 20. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. You seven, <laughs> Seventh-day Adventists. I, I, I like some of you Seventh-day Adventists. I do. Your religion was started by a woman. Hey, go, go ask the one Dudley Do-Right guy about the thing about the women. <laughs> go ahead and ask him. But, don't. That's sarcasm. Uh, Ezekiel 20, verses 10 and verse 13. Today, to the Jew first, also to the Gentile. Greek is Gentile. It is not a salvific requirement be circumcised and keep the law and also to keep the Sabbath it isn't if you want to keep the Sabbath go ahead is it a required thing for salvation today no no what was the Sabbath about verses 10 on verse 13 in Exodus 20 oops Wherefore I caused them, the Hebraic Jews, to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into this will into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and shewed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes and they despised my judgments which if a man do he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them and consume them in and then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness and consume them. The Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. The Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. Today, if you want to keep the Sabbath, if you want your one day to be uh, Saturday, the actual Sabbath, knock yourself out. Is it a requirement for salvation to be right? No. No, it isn't. And when you got someone coming along saying that it is, they're a liar, they're a heretic, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Disregard them. Okay? Okay? All right. Now, uh, go to Romans 15, verses 17 on to verse 19. Now, here is where we begin to see, where we can see, it's like, okay, sign. Like things like blood and fire, pillars of smoke, and abracadabra, hocus pocus, like turning the cookie into, like turning the perfectly round bale cookie into flesh and turning the, no, 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 check this out. Romans 15, 17 on verse 19. I have therefore whereof I may make, make glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of anything of for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Through many signs and wonders. You also got to remember, too, this is written on to the Romans. Yes, the book of Romans, yes. But also, he was an apostle. And while he was there, still alive, show, and you see in the book of Acts, he would go to the Jew first. But see, there's an aspect of this, a new creature. Now, Scripture does not readily uh, assign to being a new creature as a sign. But... 
Think about it. If the Hebraic Jew is to see their God in us, how? 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 By being a new creature. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem, the Jew first, beginning at Jerusalem, and round about unto Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And when you read in the book of Acts, what was, what was Paul's modus operandi? In Corinthians, there were Jews present. Hmm? What was his modus operandi? <laughs> Romans chapter 1, people. Come on. Romans chapter 1. All right. Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, is, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? All right? But see, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 16. And this, brother, is what you and I, uh, uh, dear brother from Croatia, this is what we were talking about right here. Yes, God can level things from heaven. But see, then, again, it will be a relegation of sight. See, the Lord can reveal some will, reveal truth to you from the Scripture. And then what He reveals to you, you can see out there in front of you. Hence, Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 16. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he, encounter, that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Some do this, some do other things, but we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and an and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Personal responsibility and accountability which Christianity likes to avoid by the umbrella term. We're all sinners. And we are. But see, Romans 3, 10 through 18, that one thing you lack, which the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Scripture, requires that your personal be dealt with. And see, you atheists that call out Christianity, you're right to do so because Christianity don't deal with the personal. They want to hide it under the umbrella. We're all sinners. And like I said, every single easy believers devil scum that you run into, every single one without exception, without an exception, sooner or later, you can get them down to, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. How be it? An example? How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Who are you proving that to? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, which Christianity will have you do. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and there is none good but God, an acceptable and perfect will of God. And see, this too is where you have to watch out for the checklist Christian who could put on the facade and have the right wordage, have the right background, okay? But see, out of the abundance of the heart, I'll speak it, okay? 
The measure of a man isn't what you see, it's what you don't see. And what you don't see, sooner or later, is produced in what you are able to see. Does that make sense? What does that mean? The chastisement of God upon a brother or a sister, you or I cannot see. We can't. The fruit thereof, of that chastisement upon a brother and a sister, or a sister, that you can see. Does that make sense? So the actual chastisement that I go through, that you go through, you're not going to see because that's between you and the Lord. But the fruit that comes after that, that's what you see. There are so many of these guys, just like the magicians in Egypt, that can put on these little uh, flashy signs and wonders. They give you the checklist. If they do this, 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 then they're your brother. No. No. Who you are when it's the ceiling, the floor, and the four walls, who you really are will sooner or later come out. They shoot themselves in the foot every time. That one can't be hid. Even though there are, oh, there are a lot, especially here on YouTube, guy from Oregon, man, very smooth. He's so good. That guy is so good. Give him credit. You can't directly pinpoint, but see, over time, there's this, 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 and this, this, and you put it together, it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, okay? All right? 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Verses 21 and 22. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. This right here is prophesying today. Okay? Speaking to you, the Lord and me speaking to you through his word. That's prophesying today. Old Testament prophets do not exist today. No matter what the satanic, wretched, care Catholic, Pentecatholics want you to believe. Okay? But the thing about the signs with tongues, okay? You see that demonstrated within the book of Acts. There were always Jews present. But also, Mark chapter 16, okay? Mark chapter 16, all right? And, and, the, and the Charismatics, the Pentecostal Charismatics, Catholics, Campbellites, they go to this. And we address this in other videos that will be in the description box for you, okay? But 17 and 18 in Mark 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. My name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. See, when the Lord saves you, he seals you with himself. A saved person can't have the devil in them. You can be influenced. Absolutely. Absolutely. Devils can speak in your ear. But someone who has the Lord within them cannot have a devil within them either. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Okay? Doesn't work that way. But see, when you are saved, you today in this dispensation, you are sealed permanently with the Lord Himself. Uh, before that, you were of your father the devil. Get it? They shall take up serpents, and they shall... And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And you see a, an example of the serpent thing in the book of Acts, where the viper latched onto his hand, okay? You can see those snake handler dudes down south, where these guys get bitten. They drink uh, strychnine. In scripture, you do not see anything anywhere of anyone drinking a, a cup of poison or anything. But, you know, remember... Scripture is considered the milk of the word. Wash them in the water of thy word. Okay. 
What drinking poison can someone drink as a reference onto that? Oh, a Bible, a catechism, uh, what is that, the Book of Discipline, hmm? the, uh, the, the Institutes of the Christian Religion. Think about it. They shall take up serpents. We walk among serpents. We do. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, these were signs that were relegated onto the apostles, which they did. But if you want to put it into this context of, you know, putting hands on the sick. Here. Here. Sick. You're sick. Is that a physical sickness or a spiritual one? Okay, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, lost people are sick spiritually. Lay hands on them by giving them the truth of the word. Now, in Mark chapter 16, the sign gifts of the apostles. Absolutely, amen, amen, hallelujah. But beyond that, okay, all right, when the Lord saves you, one of the first things that gets changed, at least with me, with most, your speech. You don't cuss. Unless, you know, we all have weak moments. Unless you accidentally drop a couch on your favorite toe and then you drop an F-bomb. We all have weak moments. But see, we don't cuss like that. These fake gracers in their live streams, they cuss without even a thing. They don't even, some of them don't even say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I mean, at least the bloke, when he cusses or does stuff, he at least does, well, I shouldn't have said that. It's like, no, you shouldn't have. Okay, you've blown your facade a long time ago. But I mean, it's like, that changes. That's like one of the first things. Okay? We get angry. We have weak moments, yes. Yes. But that's like a real, I mean, that's a tell one of the and remember too, that's one of the things that could be mimicked by the devils. Okay? That's why it takes time. Okay, it takes time for these to to discern these things, okay? Alright? All right, now go to Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4. When someone who you used to know, saint, when you were lost, they encounter you today, it's like, wow, what, got, what happened to you? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Think, think about that. Okay? That lost person who used to know you when you were lost, and you encounter them now as a saint. What does that say to that? It's like, wow, you're, you're like, you don't, you don't cuss, okay? You know, you, you you believe the scripture, you discount all this other nonsense. What happened to you? Can you give me a reason of the hope that's in you? You see? See? Ephesians 4, 11 on to verse 16. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And where are we reading to? Uh, verse 16. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the craft, by, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love. Stop. I tell you the truth out of love. It is hate to not tell someone. You don't have to be a crass jerk about it. Okay. 
You tell them lovingly, that's how you love your enemy today. You love them by telling them the truth. If they don't want to hear it, then demonstrate it by your walk. Okay? But, where you get God? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Uh, Ephesians 5, verses 14 unto 21. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools. The fool says in his heart there is no God, but as wise, someone who fears the Lord. Paul never said anything about the fear of the Lord. Oh, okay, just one second. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Out there looking at the sun with the weird glasses on, huh? Sure. Was it interesting? Sure. But who cares? <laughs> who cares? Like the brother said, he'd rather see that than consider the Jesus who is. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the capital S spirit. And how does that happen? You go the elect way of the cross. Death to self. Responsibility for you putting them on the cross and having the hell scared out of you fearing the Lord and calling upon his name. See, when you go through that in one fell swoop, calling on the name of the Lord ain't no problem. But someone who wants to be their own God and save themselves by their own belief, it's a problem. Hence, proving they're not saved. Speaking to yourself, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your hearts in your heart to the lord can two walk together unless they be agreed giving thanks always for all things unto god and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ paul never said anything about the fear of the lord huh okay submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of god Colossians 4, Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6. See, signs like woody, woody, lightning, thunderbolts, all these dramatic hallelujah stuff coming down. No, 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 no. But what are the Jews are supposed to, the Hebraic Jews are supposed to see their God in us. How are other people, what are other people supposed to see? God in us. The lost people that you used to know, they see you now. What happened to you? Do you get, the, is this making sense to you? Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, Toward them that are without, those who are not saved. Redeeming the time. There's a redeeming twice mentioned. Redeeming the time. Wherefore come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yeah. Who our walk, who are we proving what unto? Let your speech be always with grace. <laughs> Seasoned with salt. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. See, we got it. Well, no, 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 no. We're supposed to give a reason of the hope 
to every man who asketh us. But some, you know how sometimes you answer some people? Just zip it. Just zip it. That's how you answer them, by clamming up and shutting up. Go back to Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 24 now. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 17 on to verse 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding <laughs> darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness you want sin you want sin you want it God won't give it to you <laughs> rather He's going to allow you to have it. So go ahead. He takes it. Hey, go for it. I ain't going to get in your way. Go ahead. Roll up another one, buddy. <laughs> go ahead. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, that ye have heard him, Scripture, and have been taught by him, Lord is that spirit, the spirit of truth. He will lead you and guide you into all of truth. And the Lord is that spirit. As the truth is in Jesus, that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man who you were before the Lord saved you, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the lowercase s spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 and let's go to the end of the chapter. Therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us, saved people, to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The reconciliation is there, but he's not forcing people to go. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us, save people, the word of reconciliation. See, reconcil reconciliation is there for you to have, but you got to go the way of the cross. And you don't like it. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him, and lost people don't. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And how can that verse apply to one of you fake gracers when you save yourself by your own belief? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 on to verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 on to verse 13. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, the accuser of the brethren, lest I should be exalted above measure. And remember, Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of the living God, went up where Paul, where God was, excuse me, where God was. And he saw things that he said was not lawful for him to utter. And you got these idiots who come around saying they've been to hell and been to heaven. Seen, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. They've seen something. But they haven't seen the Lord. They haven't seen heaven or they haven't seen hell. 
You lie. Every one of y'all who say that, you're liars. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Remember too, book of Corinthians, Jews were still present there. Gentiles saw those signs that were for the Jews. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. The sign gifts died out with the apostles. We walk by faith, not by sight. And anything closely resembling something that you can call a sign is Christ in you the hope of glory? The new man, get it? For what is it wherein ye were inferior, inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong, a little Paul's sarcasm there. Second Thessalonians. And how meet? How meet? How meet? We're not look. We like I said. We're we, we're not looking in Hebrews. We're not looking in Revelation because Hebrew and Revelation are for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we're talking about today. Second Thessalonians verses, uh, chapter two, verses seven on to verse twelve. For the mystery of uh, of iniquity doth already work. Only he, the body of Christ, who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He ain't going nowhere. The body of Christ is. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. The sign unto the Hebraic Jew today, they are supposed to see us, in us, their God. And unless you're a saint, they don't see it. And with all this evilness of unrighteousness and them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. The love, the truth. How do you receive the, Lord, uh, the love of the truth? Through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. And in doing that, you will call upon his name. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You want to you think you're your own God by saving yourself by your own belief? Go, go right ahead. Go have fun. You know, roll up another one, buddy. Go ahead. Right? You, you want to believe that you're your own God? You want to believe millions and billions of woo-hoo-hoo? Go ahead. That they all might be damned Believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's going to be it for this video today. I'm suggesting to you that if anything of a sign that people are supposed to see, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not by you speaking in some blah, 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 blah. 
but in demonstration of the truth of walking according to the scripture a new being a new creature which results in a changed life many people have a changed life but that changed life doesn't come with most of them from by being a new creature be a new creature Christ in you the hope of glory brings about changed life I'm suggesting to you yes brother yes the Lord can send fire bolts yes and can have you know fire bolts coming out of the rear end <laughs> sure but see then that would be dependent on what hmm? well Brad you're saying that you know what they behold see we are to give the lost the truth through the word and most people don't want to hear the word and when they don't want to hear the word what other option is there than to behold your conduct according to scripture it's the word first always sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth this scripture scripture but see I don't believe that I believe Paul was a false prophet I don't want to I am my own what are you left with your conduct according to the very scripture that they deny which um, which the majority of the witnessing that is being done today is in that shoe because people don't want to hear faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God I hope this helps brother and to the brethren who had a part in this video, thank you. Thank you. Please keep your servant in prayer. Some real challenging hard times are coming. Real challenging hard times are here. Please pray. Please keep, please keep your servant in your prayers. Please. And please keep each other in prayer. Thank you for watching this if you do. Like I said, there are going to be a whole lot of uh, things in the description box for you to consider. If you don't want to consider them, that's your fault. So, thank you. Love you. See you in the next video.